Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland uh, Select Board of Awesomeness. Tonight's meeting is a relatively light agenda. We have Sarah Snyder, some folks coming in to talk about a little road work, a few updates from the board. We're going to have a manhole construction school street bid discussion. Heavy. This is heavy stuff. This right is now. when our viewers go this is, up. This is your democracy <laughs> hard at work. We're going to amend some minutes to talk about a recommendation from the personnel committee for the use of a sick bank. And I have to say that in the tenure that I've been here, this is the first time I've ever voted to allow on the sick bank a policy that we've had for a long, long time. So good for whoever started that process and uh, whoever needs that. Good for you as well. We'll take care of that business. Um, We'll start, if we could, we have a brief meeting with uh, some folks regarding uh, North Silver and uh, Riverside Park. So you're, you're, you're like double subjecting tonight, right? Uh, I am, yeah. yeah. Oh boy, which yeah, one do you want to start with? Phil is just someone, huh? Which one do you want to start with? Well, let's just do the driveway. This okay. is my neighbor, Phil Silver. Hey, Phil. Hello, and, Phil. Um, we I'm Jessica Corwin's husband. That's <laughs> <laughs> more as to get money for the town. <laughs> That's good. We happen to share a driveway. We have a shared driveway on North Silver. Uh -huh. okay. And we've had um, an issue for years and years and years. And it's happening right now. If you on your way home, you want to drive by, you sure. can see the issue in action. But right at the bottom of our um, driveway is a just constant um, puddle situation all the way across the driveway. Now, I've had, um, we've been asking for help for years. Mm -hmm. and nothing's happened nothing's happened for years um i've had two professionals come out um and look at it including carlos and they say that that it's a drainage issue that crosses five properties hmm. um all the way from the other side of the triangle down to where there's a um, um, culvert that goes into a, a brook are you okay. sort of in the path of that drainage yeah, and it just happens to all collect. Okay. Right ours, is the low, ours is the low point. Yeah. It like okay. sags at our driveway, yeah. so it doesn't it doesn't drain. Okay. But um, it is the town property, and there's nothing we can, we can't do something ourselves across the five properties. Right. So, um, so just um, would like to ask um, for this to be addressed this year, at all possible. Okay. Um, is the culvert clogged at all that's uh, just no, one thing no. so the culvert's flowing okay yeah it's so like at this at this point since the rain was a little while ago ours is the only one with a puddle left got it and okay the puddle probably stretches eight feet mm -hmm. by two feet and it'll last another week if it doesn't rain again got it yeah okay and um so what needs to happen is the somebody has to kind of do the um um uh, you know measure the slope yep. from the high point to low point and then kind of make grade it so it drains. The water is running, but it's just very stops there. Yeah. You guys have talked to George. Mm -hmm. Okay, George has got a busy schedule this summer. Cherry, have you talked to George at all? I have. He's going to try to get to it um, this summer sometime. Okay. Uh, Mr. So, Chair, is yeah, uh, Bears End Road a town road? Uh, this is North. Silver. It was created by subdivision control. We're not on Bears End. Well, you, I thought North you said it's it. I, I thought you said it was near Bears Den. No, okay. North Silver. Yep. But to, to your point, Tom, one of subdivisions created, one of the first, how many has ever went to? I think we accepted Country Pine, Lane. Pine Court. Pine Court or Country Lane. Oh, There's another one. Off of Pine Court. We, yep. And, and, and they have, and right, but, and they have to, you, you can create, right. but they, but still they need to come to town meeting to be, delay it needs to be accepted. Yep. Accepted. Uh, right. Such as Buttonball Meadow. Yep. You know, Button Ball Meadow, the roads were accepted at town meeting. I, I and I and so I, I don't know if, if Bears Den is is actually it's a piece of homework, but you, you raise a good point where they intersect. I think what I'm hearing you say, Sarah, and, ours is nowhere near Bears Den. This is our driveway in, into T tying to the road, North Silver Lane, a major thoroughfare, yeah, yeah. thoroughfare through town. Sorry, what were you trying to say, Scott? No, no, I think what Tom Tom's point was that. If it was private, which it's which it's not, you're intersecting with North Silver, and that's important to bear in mind. This is repair work on North Silver. Yes, correct. Yeah. So North Silver and Park Road. 
No, but, um, we're we? our, we're both on. I'm 114 North Silver. He's 110 North. Silver. I'm just trying to look at the satellite. Just yeah. Do you know where the triangle is on Garage Road? Oh yeah. So it starts from where, where Garage hits the the top of that triangle yep. is where it intersects, yep. and that's that's where the problem stems yep. from. We're 30 feet down from that. Got it. But to, to Tom's point, I'll let you finish, Tom. About about accepting of of a, of a road that's being developed, we have a long intersection going in and out of Sugarbush as well, and it's important to bear that in mind. That is a long driveway, so we have to bear in mind that who knows what comes in the future with something like that. If they want to have it accepted as a public way, it, it, yeah, and, and well, I think and, I'm and feeding and off of what you were so, building. So these on. are off from this is off from those steep the steep driveways. So so I I would go I I and again I would go back. Mm -hmm. to, and I would ask to, to look at the original plans when the driveways were put in mm -hmm. and, and see, because we do have driveway permit applications. Yeah. Uh, and before a driveway can be put in, they're supposed to get a sign off by the, the highway superintendent. The problem was made significantly worse when the, when the road was, was uh, resurfaced yeah. five years ago. Okay. So there was a modest problem before that made dramatically worse after okay. they changed that. And we told we told the town right after that happened, and they sort of dismissed it and let it go, and and now we're back. We're back again. Okay. So so it before so I I would actually, you know, ask the building and I would I'd want a building inspector to, you know, pull it out yeah. and and see what was on on the original plans for drainage and sure. was that a privately installed drainage et cetera before make comments like that. Okay. Because I don't know. It would have been uh, 1986 when that drive was 85 or 86. Okay. And Jim Williams was the contractor. Yeah, so I was oh. probably back. When <laughs> oh, now we know. <laughs> and that probably back when uh, Bonnie Bonnie was the uh, building inspector. So Bonnie probably it is probably something. Talks about that. And and I I know she was talking. Mm -hmm. Or there was talk about I, I don't know exactly when the the driveway permits come in, mm -hmm. but I know that she was concerned, or the building inspectors were concerned back then, um, when there was homes put on. You know, they they were looking at what they called adequate access. Correct. So you are having steep driveways and, and how they entered and mm -hmm. the drainage. So but it'd be interesting if maybe we'll that would predate. That maybe that predates. That action, but it'd be interesting to find out. Not, not it's not germane to this piece, mm -hmm. but we have had on an extension of the ditch discussion mm -hmm. about uh, a cul-de-sac that had swale as part of the original installation that over a decade plus slowly got filled in, drainage got filled in, and then there's water in my basement. It's like, oh, yeah, well, well, wait a minute, so. Go back yeah. retroactively, pull you know, reconstruct those pieces again. Not germane to, to this particular discussion, but time. It's like here comes more time. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll George uh, get together, look at that, mm -hmm. see where it is in the schedule for uh, this this work cycle this year, and that's an important piece to get feedback. If we could have some correspondence from George, say the first part of July about what the timeline is, because he's finishing up projects now here. Here, he, you know, so we'll see what it, we've got going forward for the uh, late summer, early fall season because we get that piece wrapped up. Okay, Riverside Park. I want a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Slick Board of Awesome. <laughs> 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 Have a good night. Okay, good night. Right, so, okay, so um, I just I had just had a couple. We're 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 planning away on the uh, opening celebration for oh, July thirteenth. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and there it's it's gonna be a very full day of activities all over the park. Um, and I just wanted to check in with you all about a few things. Um, one is that um, we're working on um, getting some food vendors mm -hmm. um, and want to find out about using power, the um, power mm -hmm. that's out on the fields for that. On the ball field? Um, or I guess so. I don't know. I mean, I, it, So there is power out at the, the dugout area. Right. And depending on how the last, our last series of meetings went here, there can be power where the pool used to be. Uh-huh, right. It's pretty straightforward. Right. So, and that, and it's okay for, do, what do we need, what do we need to do to... I can work with you on that. 
Okay. All right. Um, and um, and then another thing is uh, what we do about trash. Is there? Um, I'd suggest as we have don't have trash pickup here right. Right. specifically that maybe we can work with uh, trash hauler and get an event series like of event series of tip, one of those you know guys. exactly yeah. get her, make sure to focus on the recycling piece and and the trash yep. piece and you know buy an event so like one of the outfits like that does collection yep. yeah. every yep. year you, yep. you contract with them for an event we'll yep. do like a special thing okay okay so we just contact them and um, all right and then another piece is that um, you know we really want the celebration to incorporate all of the elements of the park and one important element is the veterans memorial and I've um, um, been reaching out to uh, reach out to Dan Van Dalson he said he's not going to be here on that date um, and I mentioned it um, he said he was going to mention it to Mickey Hearn, but I haven't heard anything from Mickey. And I, I mentioned it to um, Eric Dimitropoulos, um, but you know, haven't heard anything. So I just was wondering if you all had any suggestions for how to, um, how best to um, include the Veterans Memorial in the event. Tom, what do you think? We should reach out to to Dan and Mickey. Kind of a kind of event. If we're trying to incorporate into the opening of the park, remind people that the Veterans Memorial is an important aspect of the totality of this area. Right. Veterans. Mm. You know, we can talk. We can yeah. Talk to Dan. You know, he may not be here, but he may be willing to help us work something else. Right. Now. Right. Think about types of events. Sorry, get to right. work. What kind of event could go on there? What kind of interaction could go on there? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they would like to have some music in there, mm -hmm. or, or you know, at a certain time. I, you know, veteran uh, story reading hour, mm -hmm. something, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. So yeah. We, have, we have a relatively short period of time to kind of brainstorm and then that idea flush it out and then execute. We wanted to have the schedule pretty much settled a month in advance, so that would be June. 13. So we got a couple of weeks, and that's the that most. Thing. Or you could get one person from each of the representative services to sit on the bench. Oh. <laughs> their service, you know. Bad idea. Color yeah. guard. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, we'll I guess we'd need, you know, someone. Little input from them. Who, you know, would want to, would be interested in kind right. of doing something and engaging people and taking it on. So okay. I guess, um, you know. Okay, anything else there with regard to the opening? So we're talking 713 scheduled to yes. follow, right? Yes, it's ba the ribbon cutting will be at 930. And there's just activities all over all day until uh, the, the finale will be a concert by the Neals nice. in the library right, at 630. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Everybody can take whatever knotweed they want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would be good if we could put everything. <laughs> Take only not weed in pictures. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, um, one other thing I'll just mention is that, I mean, just for the heck of it, since I'm here, we, we're going to be, um, you know, soliciting some donations. We don't um, have a budget yet for the event. We don't need a huge budget. Um, no fireworks or anything. <laughs> but. Um, uh, um, in, in the process of figuring out how to solicit donations, um, I've had conversations that made me aware that it's like pretty much impossible to do online um, donations um, with the, the financial system right. that we have. And I talked to Sherry about it, and I think like, you know, we're, we live in a click society now. And um, like, it would be so much easier to raise funds if we could. Mm -hmm. To online donations and I just yep. hope I know like for this event it's not gonna happen but it's gonna have to be I mean or it would be yep. to our benefit if we could transition right, somehow some kind of to pay make vendor that on. functionality possible that ties back into our website provider and what kind of <clears throat> um, for lack of a better word like internet store they can set up in that respect you know uh -huh. what I mean because we have um, something set up where you can pay, you know, 
your current taxes and things like that, but we don't have like a true like um, online vendor thing set up. Right. So, and the so other thing is municipal accounting. finance. I was going to say, well, accounting might be a firewall. Yeah. So that's a whole other issue. Well, that's what it is. I talked to the accountant, and they're like, oh, we'd have to set up a whole other bank account. Not another bank account. Yeah. Unless, well, I'm trying to think. You could set yourselves up as like a 501c3, right? right? If there was and a friends. Then, a friends of. Yeah, that's what yeah. the, I talked to right, the friends of library like people, and they said they just, Use PayPal, like mm. you know, but they're a five hundred one C three. We don't have time to. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we could do it for friends of the park in the future, but you know. That's interesting, huh? Yeah. So, a uh, piece of homework leaving with that thought, uh, leaving us with that thought, would be, you know, what are the obstacles and what are the opportunities? Somebody's got to do it somewhere in the Commonwealth, right? Well, and maybe that. Yeah, exactly. I and, can ask um, Tom Scanlon when he comes in for the audit, and I'll check with Stan. Mm -hmm. Too, to see if anyone's doing it um, in any of the other towns. I, I can pay with a credit card or a parking meter. Exactly. Some, somehow, well, right. somehow, somehow, or, somehow this has been figured out. Or back to what we were saying earlier, like there's an app for that. Like all those meters that I don't personally, because of security issues, I don't use my credit card in machines that are linked only with Wi-Fi because of Wi-Fi skimming and everything. But all those meters are tied into an app that you can use, which is great. You pay you know, a little service fee, but yeah, then it yeah. saves up all of the places that you've been to. Mm -hmm. and So you can go to Northampton, yep. Amherst, yep. or whatever, and I can yep. just pay right on my phone. Oh, and nice. you can also add more money without having to run exactly. back out, right. which is nice. When the second glass of wine rolls out, yeah, and you're like, oh, <laughs> conversation is rich. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Damn it. Oh, look at <laughs> My pocket starts vibrating, right? right. But maybe that's we can tie that into because how we were talking about maybe creating like a full on parks and rec department. Mm -hmm. Maybe we tie that into an account there or something sure. like that that can be utilized for all of it. So you said opportunity, and then yeah. and then what are the mechanics of it? Appreciate that yes. uh, seed being planted. It's a good idea. All right, that's it for me. Thank fix, you. Let me know if you fix have a road, throw a party, get online. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good seeing you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you Thanks, very Sarah. much. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, next up we have uh, minutes of 5, 6, uh, 19. Oh, wait, there they are. Peter was here. And we had a poll hearing. It was a good time. Actually, well, Mr. Chair, I, 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 I do want to go back to the driveway. Yep. I, I, I again, um, the driveway enters onto the town road. I'm sure the, the there was drainage there before the the driveway. The driveway would interrupt that drainage path, mm -hmm. yep. so a drain was added. Typically, the town wouldn't add a drain for an individual's driveway. Good point. So, I, and, and again, I, I mean, I, I I'd like to be consistent in what in in my view, but mm -hmm. if and the house was built in 1986. Prior to that time, mm -hmm. there was dry, there was drainage across. It's no different than we than when we have private residents come to us and say, "Look, the sewer doesn't extend down to my road mm -hmm. or down to my home. Can I put in a pumped system yep. to tie?" That's a good analogy. And, and we say, "Absolutely," mm -hmm. but you're responsible forever right. for that maintenance of that line and there is maintenance of that line so and, and we're very good about putting that in writing today that you know you you so I, I'm not sure and again if they say there was drainage there and you and you bring you coming off from the hill yep. and onto the road well there was drainage there before that now that driveway you're cutting across the path. You, you're going across that path. Yep. So who's respons who's responsible? Uh, and it's on town on town land. Or we heard it's on town land. The impact is on town property right now. Right. Right. Well, well of course, because your driveway comes on. Exactly. And and that's where the drainage was. So so I, I, I again I, I just want to be consistent with what we we, we tell people. Correct. No, as, as, we, as we talk about those uh, later on the agenda about those driveway and. Pieces. We have a situation on South Main Street that's being being resurfaced. Right. I see 
uh, manways access to stormwater as well as sewer systems being uh, cemented in today. So those elevations are changing a little bit. Yeah, they're, elevating they're elevating structures. Elevating right. structures. So yeah. the question becomes, you know, where, what impact do we have with that space and what impact does a driveway cut or a curb cut come in and have on, on the town's space? Correct. And I think that, that vantage point, Tom, is, is a good one to have because it is a couple of different ways. Absolutely. So, I, and again, I, I, you know, someone built a house. Right. Yep. They had to get to the. They had to get to, get the, to road. the road. Yep. Um, they were still responsible to to, to to recreate the drainage that was there. Right. So you put a drain pipe there. Yep. Well, it's no long, It's not the town's responsibility because it's now it's in the town. You put it there. Right. You put it there. I think that that piece of history will come out. I wrote down 1986, and then and then the date, and drill down, drill down on what that that history actually is. Yeah. And then get George's input as well. Is it just a piece of road that has has you know gotten ahead of itself? We don't know that yet. But the two impacts are important. Either way, someone's going to end up mitigating it. And I say someone, not necessarily being the town, not necessarily being the 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 people on the other end of the discussion. And I'm guessing different houses were done at different times. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I think to, to Tom's point earlier about having a policy around it's the most important part. Yeah. You know, we, we do a fair amount of road work any given year. We don't see it you know, when it's not on the, the main thoroughfares, but the highway department does a very good job of chip sealing Falls Road in the season or, you know, building oh. out Patrol Across or et cetera, et cetera. So that impact. Uh, you do it across the entire town, and then you have to come back. You know, you just keep coming back. It's like painting houses. It's by like painting houses. Start in the front. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly right. Um, minutes of five six. Uh, make a motion on those. Second. There's a motion made and seconded for the minutes of uh, May sixth. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Eight to zero. Okay. Selectman's updates. Uh, let's see. We are waiting to schedule our next ditch committee meeting. Nice. We had a personnel committee meeting, which we one of the things on our agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're trying to plan out in the personnel committee meeting our stuff going forward for the next year and trying to get our goals lined up for that. Um, and still working on negotiations for Union 38. Really? Really. Okay. Had a meeting Thursday. Oh. Um, I, I don't remember because we don't have it listed on the calendar which group it is because I know one of the meetings we only have IAs one night um, so it is continuing right that's good we'll just leave it at that uh, Tom um, Mr. Chair the uh, Board of Oversight for the ambulance um, there was no meeting this month um, it was a quiet month the budgets had passed in the towns so it, it was decided to give uh, the, uh, the director a night off from a, not to have to go to another meeting. Um, but we're still, you know, they're still looking at the new ambulance coming in and um, also looking at uh, the town of Deerfield um, donating to South County a used vehicle they can kind of use as a command car to do some of the daily transportation you know going to the dump and the other things that 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 occurs on a daily thing at the south county ems so they don't have to use an ambulance for all that's good another repurposed unmarked cruiser yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they, they're they're working on that um we, we did not have a meeting of the, the senior center, um, but Christine is working on, on the last of the thing. I, I do want to get the, um, their newsletter out there because there, there's a tremendous amount of things that happen at the senior center and, and I think that I think need to be published on a more more regular basis so people understand the things that are going on and, and it's not like the senior center of t 5 10 15 years ago they're 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 doing a lot of different things um going a lot of different places um and there's kind of like depending on what your day day that you go to the senior center there's different people so there's a wide variety of different people using it as well 
hopefully they're also going to try to expand out into the towns more um, hmm. and and try to do things with uh, with the libraries and and other places to um, see if we and, and also try to work on transportation try to getting a better transportation system so there's more public transportation available to seniors they also um, the FERCOG had our um, meeting, um, last meeting canceled. They um, they didn't have anything to talk about, which mm. so unusual. Which, well, it is, but it's not. Um, they and 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 it was just a, an opportune time, not for them not to have a meeting and try. They're going to try in our because they're quarterly meetings and they were going to bring in more information. Uh, shortly to us so that's where that stands okay. so on a couple on a couple of fronts uh, the frontier negotiations are moved to a recommendation to the school committee that meeting is okay. coming up next week so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes I want to thank both the administration as well as the bargaining unit that worked through some pretty difficult things to get to what seems to be consensus so each it's in front of each of the units and we'll see um, now that we're through the annual town meeting, we're going to schedule a capital planning committee meeting for the next three weeks or so to look toward the building recommendations that were part of the survey oh. and how that fits into the next year's uh, capital plan. We want to be able to do that offline without, I'm sorry, not offline. We want to be able to do that. It's a public meeting. Anybody can come. We want to be able to do that in a fashion that doesn't have the pressures of department expense requests annual requests and capital yep. so with that body can bring forward a recommendation for the next couple of years to this board so that we can begin that planning process that's that important sense. to bear in mind also the town was in receipt of the uh, DEP's um, uh, conditions notice of conditions uh, for the 120 North Main Street uh, and those, I'm sorry, order of conditions. Those yeah. order of conditions uh, are not uh, onerous. That project, uh, from the DEP's perspective, uh, has is the green light to move forward. Uh, I want to take the time to thank Berkshire Design as well as RDI, who weren't who weren't jaw dropped when the first mm. the yeah, first the, the first um, challenge came to the ruling yeah. of the conservation commission because they have worked so closely with uh, the department as well as an understanding and the DEP requirements that when these order of conditions came down they didn't come across as as onerous they came across as being very attentive very uh, important during the construction process uh, what areas of impact can and cannot be had, but again, RDI's perspective is they weren't onerous, and I consider that uh, a great step forward with respect to 120 North Main. That's I mean, good. it's they did all their homework and everything beforehand, uh, yeah, so yeah. it's a lot of work put into it. A lot of work that was put into that, so that's a very good thing. Uh, we're going to talk later tonight about uh, 120 North Main with the ZBA chair, but on the DEP front, uh, that the project has an order of conditions and they're strict. And they will be enforced, and that does not stop the project. Okay, Cherry, what do you think? Anything? Um, I have a recommendation for award for the manhole construction on School Street. That's part of the capital grant that we received. So that's just this space here, mm -hmm. and that manhole construction has to do with a tie from across the properties on on uh, 116 right right because they go in now blind yeah. and it's important to get a clean out and access point correct great okay um we had budgeted twenty thousand dollars in that in the grant for yeah. that project the bid came in at um just over eighteen thousand yeah. and mm -hmm. the company is morse uh construction and engineering uh, Furcog and the engineer for the project, Sarah Campbell, yep. um, have has vetted the company and recommends that we uh, move forward with the award. Okay. Uh, make a motion. 
for discussion or second second for discussion or second right. to approve uh, I'm good with the approval okay Tom want any discussion no. I mean, an I, I, and again this it. it's a thing that has to be done I, I, I mean um, you have to main we have to maintain our infrastructure and that's a prime example is that there was a line that we didn't know about for many many years it got clogged uh, it flooded uh, two sewer users they've been paying their sewer bills and and it was just because we were not able to maintain because we couldn't jet rod so at, we have to jet rod that line the sewer line it, it uh, has to do it from here it, it, and it needs to be done yep. um, and, and and again that you know that this that's something that's the town responsibility to to our residents it's not, it's something that we put in that we're responsible for yep. so I, I I think it's a something we're gonna do okay uh, there's no more discussion all those in favor aye, aye. Three to zero, please. <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Anything else, Sherry? That's it. Summer schedule while we're here. Oh, I do have one more thing. The um, draft ADA plan um, transition and um, it's a self-evaluation and transition plan. Uh, we received community compact funds and the FERCOG has completed that plan mm. um, and Megan Rhodes will be in in a couple of weeks to present it but that may help with the uh, capital, capital planning plan. as okay. well it'll yeah. outline the um, things that we need to do to bring the buildings up in our programs um, and it will also open us up to uh, grant funding up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to implement grant those recommendations okay. so that'll That's help good. that makes sense Okay, and we'll see that <clears throat> through through July. Great. Okay, so I'm going to jump down to summer schedule since it's all part of the kind of the, the TA uh, town administrators update. You get us down for June 13, June 17, July 1, July 15, July 29, August 12, August 26, September 9. You guys want to meet more frequently than that? Oh, can we move twice a week and Saturdays <laughs> once a month? I like your style. There you go. <laughs> Every other week until. <laughs> Brilliant. Move to adopt the schedule. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Let's see if we actually get through and only adhere no, to the schedule. No, we won't. There's always other meetings. There's plenty of other meetings that exactly. are involved in. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have correspondence from uh, Chairman of the Conservation Commission recommending an appointment. You want me to read it, Mr. Chair? Uh, just, I, I, just the name, Tom. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to bring the name of Gabrielle Kurth forward as a appointed member of the uh, Conservation Commission that has been enthusiastically recommended by the Conservation Commission. Brilliant. Uh, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, and thanks, Ellie, for for volunteering. Appreciate that sounds that. great yep. stuff, and her her background is going to be really helpful on the comp yes. com as well. Okay. Next up, we've got a we've got a resignation, a team resignation. Yeah. Tom, we you were you were part of the beginning of this with with this dynamic duo here. Oh, well, no, they, they the dynamic duo predates. Um, Many, yep. Bobby and Mary have been involved in the fire department for a long, long, long time, yep. and and part of part is a part of the and Bob and Mary Ellen working with the fire department and the EMTs. They are both members of our Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team um, that was very, very uh, active and put ha has put out a lot of good policies and worked with. <clears throat> a lot of good organizations so at this time <coughs> because Bob is no longer the chief and Mary Ellen is no longer involved with the EMT they have offered their resignation any discussion mr. chair I'd like to make a motion with regrets is there a second uh, second uh, I would add that uh, having been in a handful of those meetings as well as those exercises and drills uh, there was never any question about uh, the Aherns, both uh, Mary Ellen, Bob and Mary Ellen's, uh, to the cause, and they did that all without 
without any ego, all of it just for the betterment of the community, and that's a beautiful thing. Service is very much appreciated. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we have a letter as well, Sherry, that we can sign next week? Sure. Um, we're also trying to coordinate a, it's time to update the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of So course. two dates, uh, May 28th and a June 3rd. I don't know if either of those are. are, they, are they, we just did June 3rd. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just put it on for June 3rd. June 3rd. Yeah. Yep. Right, we're already on. First agenda item for the June 3rd. Day. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have an amendment to minutes of 1-7-2019. This has to do with the resignation and including the resignation, I think, of uh, Tom Zimnowski from uh, FCAT's Cats. Board of Directors. It was not captured in the minutes. Mr. Chair, at this time I'd like to uh, amend the minutes of January 17th to include the resignation of... <clears throat> Tom Zimnowski. And that's from the FCAT board? Yeah. Okay. Second. And you want to have that? We have a motion made and seconded. Just one piece of discussion. You want to have that placed in under updates? Right? As a, as a mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, a fifth bullet point? Yep. Uh, that's fine. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, personnel committee recommendation for a sick bank request. Mr. Chair, do we do we carry over sick time from one year to the next? Oh, there's a bank that's involved. Okay, but so my question is, mm -hmm. is you, is if I have thirty hours of sick time in this fiscal year, mm -hmm. and July first, or if I have zero. If I have 30 hours of, if I have 30 hours of sick time today, mm -hmm. I don't use any up to June 30th. How many hours do I have June 1st? Do I have the 30 plus? Over. What it is? I I did not I did not think we carried mm. over sick bank or or not sick bank, but I didn't know we carried over sick time, and we haven't. I didn't thought for a long time. Tom, I'm actually not sure of that with respect to carrying over versus the bank. Here it says there's a bank that's able to be participated in by the employees to contribute to and it shall not exceed a total of $600. I, I qu my, my question arises uh -huh. because we have, a, we have this. We have this thing here uh -huh. that's documenting people's sick time. Right. So is that telling well, that me? That's the bank. That's the bank, not the yeah, person's sick time. Yeah, not your so this is what we've got accrued in the bank mm -hmm. per person. That's what each employee has donated to the bank. It's not. Oh, oh okay. So we have a sick bank. I don't remember. I don't remember ever seeing that. April nineteenth, two thousand eleven. Yeah. It was adopted by the board. Okay. Yep. Uh, an employee who applies for use of leave from the board from the bank shall be notified in writing of the board of the selectman's decision on the personnel committee's recommendation and the number of hours, if any, granted. So every year, um, town employees are allowed to donate up to 24 hours to the sick bank. Oh, but uh, so they carry over into the new fiscal year? Correct. It goes into mm. this to the to the, the bank. sick bank to, into the sick right. sick bank. They have in order to use sick bank time, they have to use up all their yeah. personal vacation and other time sick time. Right. And so it's for. Um, is it ordered here? So so to do the mechanics of it to Tom's to Tom, where I, I, I'm trying to flush out where Tom's going mm -hmm. here. If, if I don't use my time, I can donate a value of time to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bank resides over there, right. right? Employees who do not use up all of their sick time can donate time to the bank. Right. Like I can up say to 24 hours. Up to 24 hours. Max. No more than 24 yeah. hours. Yep. The bank shall not have anything more than 600 hours. Right. Right? Total. So always a cap of 600. So the bank sits over there not as an employee. An employee may ask for access to the bank and that's what this discussion tonight is about mm -hmm. yep exactly 
And is there a cap on what that access is? Or can I be the person who asks for $600? Because the bank is $600 cap. I don't believe you can ask for the entire bank. Well, I mean, I but, can. Well, you, you <laughs> can ask, yeah. There's a policy I'm allowed for it. See, this, right? uh, it says the employee shall not be granted leave from the bank in excess of 90% of the available sick leave Got in it. the bank. Right there, five. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So to your point, Tom, yeah. individual carryover is no. Right, only bank carryover. Only bank carries over. We've actually only used this once since we founded it, mm -hmm. which is a good thing in a way. Yeah. But it's nice that it's there. Two, 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 contribute to 24. And, and and again, I just want to make sure that we're being consistent, mm -hmm. and 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 that my 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 question is is that you you have you have things listed by individuals, so our individuals believe that that sick bank is their or if they're you know what I'm trying to say yeah it, no it's, it's not your personal sick bank correct but but right. it's not it's not listed and if I would thought I, I would think that you would just say okay there's 1100 hours available in order to use it you you have to have contributed to it too and so yeah, that's that just the record right. well, I understand that I, and, and again my, my question and again my my point is is that when you start looking at liability of sick time okay I would much I would much rather us look at what it would cost for a disability insurance policy for employees mm -hmm. versus the in, incur incurring of rolling over sick time. I, I, I think because it, it and again and that's just my I I, I think if you're, if you're gonna say okay someone is very sick mm -hmm. Um, right now, we don't roll over sick time from one year to the next. Right. Right. And in and and I would now. So right now, it looks like you that we have almost twelve hundred hours of sick time. So st someone could come up by you to say they could have what eight eighty percent of that, ninety percent of it, whatever it is. Six hundred. Yeah. So so that would be yeah. X amount hours. of hours. Yeah. So what's that cost versus what what's that cost yeah. versus a disability prop? That would probably offer our employees a better option. Fair. fair. That's a fair point. And again, that's just. And again, that's not. I don't. I don't want to take anything away, you know. But I. I. I but I want to make it better right. and also limit the town. Uh, limit the town's exposure to um, um, a basically something that we couldn't pay. Something for personnel committee to take a look at. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm looking at a short-term disability mm -hmm. plan. Right. Seeing what what that costs. Yeah. I, I. And again, that may that may that may be advantageous for us versus having the sick bank per se. Well, we could definitely look at it. I mean, because that's really why you put the sick bank in is because you don't have a short-term disability. Yeah, there, understood. So. But I, I just don't want it to be an implied implied. Well, we, that, sure. that's my time. You think about it in the grand oh, scheme. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. I, I've, I've worked for a decade. I put in my maximum for a decade. You know, I'm not necessarily owed that. I know there's a cap. I'm contributing to the greater pool. I understand that. But if I need a hundred hours and it doesn't exist, well, what did I participate for? Right. Whereas if I need a hundred hours, I'm making it all up. And you have a short-term disability. I find sign this paper. And everybody can do it, which yeah. is you know not not the most optimum thing, but it certainly affords a benefit to a, a more complete benefit to the entire workforce. Mm -hmm. So, and right. it may be something that's supplemental we can look at. I think that makes great sense. This I think was a good step forward back in the day because we went from nothing, no carrying over individually, mm -hmm. right. to a collective carry forward. And it was people. probably it's probably because, and again. What I've learned is that um, over time, and, and, it was, and it was addressed earlier about the driveway, the drainage. Mm. Right. Well, the, the drainage was put in so they could put a driveway there. Right. And now, and now 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, it's a town's responsibility. Right. 
Well, that's not how it started. So, and, and again, I, I would say, and again, this is be in proper reaction to not being able to carry over sick time. But they a sick bank was created to do that. So section 3116 of the personnel bylaw says that regular full-time employees will have up to 12 days of paid sick leave per year, which shall be accrued at the rate of one day per month. Mm -hmm. Sick leave shall be calculated on a fiscal year basis. Mm -hmm. Sick leave may be accumulated up to a limit of 75 work days. So then it's the sick bank would pick up after the difference the so you can uh, accrue up to so we already 75 have that in the days 75. Yep. In the, that's in the personnel bylaw okay so we have a request we have a piece of homework which is short-term disability we can look at that with maya see what's available or whoever yeah. i don't really care who it is but you know what's out there in the world it's american fidelity is who we use that's okay but that's volunteer employee paid mm -hmm. yeah. and and then uh, flush out uh, this last piece with respect to the sick bank access request. Now that came to the personnel committee. Right. We have an access request, and and the access request is for how much? Eight days. Eight days out of the available six hundred hours that are in the bank. Actually, eleven. Well, no There's more. more than, than yeah. That. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that because if I look at that's I'm gonna just be slightly tangential here mm -hmm. if it says that we have 1200 nearly 1200 hours total contributed but the bylaw reads shall not exceed Six. 600 hours at any time so it's is 600 that, is, hours it really is six and people have right. contributed more than that six all right and many have left but the bylaw the policy also yeah. says the sick yeah. time it stays in it stays the bank stays in the in the bank you may need to yeah, it might be something. Tweet to so there's another another piece. Prune. Yeah, another piece that comes out of there. I mean, you know, people right. may want to be. You know, people don't come in to use up all of their sick time. Generally speaking, mm -hmm. that said, you know, I look at these totals, and I see totals that are some of them in the hundreds, some of them in the low ten, low tw uh, some of them as low as twenty. That six hundred total sick leave bank accumulate year to year. I hope that's not perceived as being for any given individual. No, it shouldn't be because that's I there. Guess. The language, Sorry. the language right here doesn't call for it. It just says shall not exceed total sick leave in the bank. So another, another piece of clarification, right? And I'm guessing, you know, that when we drafted that was probably pulled from some other yeah. sick yeah, bank. Yeah. That yeah. Totally um, well, I, I'm I'm just thinking too, like mechanically, how do you? So now we have like eleven. 186 mm, like how do right. we prune that back right we just do the policy says not to exceed 600 because i guess in a way it, it hmm. so something to noodle over as, as, we, as we pull this apart and look at it you know this came from the approval request right tom tom added uh the question about short-term disability piece i think that that's worth exploring both fiscally yeah. and oh. practically mm -hmm. speaking and then you look at these totals and you look at the actual policy and they don't quite add up Matter of fact, they exceed. So, I would hope that it's not perceived as individual piece as well as the bank in and of itself. Yeah, I mean, it right now we have a bank that's too big to fail. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Honestly, I think a lot of people kind of forgotten about it okay. in a lot of ways. Uh, <coughs> so again, uh, discussion around these this area seems three things: uh, short term disability piece cap on the bank and that includes people contributing and then uh, these uh, request function like this one here is coming to the board through the personnel committee is for 10 days it's for Eight 64 days. hours 64 Eight hours days, yeah. so, so the bank has plenty in it yep the policy is clear you've got to use up your own time before you can uh, before you can withdraw from the bank right. so yeah, this, this employees you use exhausted all that and is looking for these days okay any more discussion about this? Uh, Personal yeah. committee was unanimous or yeah. recommending? Yeah. Recommending? Yeah. Recommended unanimously. Okay. Yep. I'm just looking at thinking about like you know even if we keep this for a little while going forward like yeah like, understanding it we have the uh, history from the overall number of hours in it it doesn't matter who donates it mm -hmm. but 
you know, I'm just wondering what the value of tracking it by person. In a way, you have to. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to the total, here's your max weight. Right, right. And then so we have to kind of prune them out. So we'll have to figure out a formulaic way to like, oh, maybe we don't. I don't know. Maybe right. you just track here's how many hours each person put in and then like a, de <laughs> a deposit and a withdrawal, right? Yeah, essentially right, exactly. from the bank. Pretty much. And then, you know, we just go in and edit the number to... I guess you made my point about looking into short-term disability. Yeah, no, I agree. It's become much e much less yep. cumbersome. Bird of, bird <laughs> yep. Administratively. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I guess the only question is is how much does it cost? Right. Great points. Great yeah. points. And there's only one way to find that out. Yep. Yeah, we can talk ourselves in and around a policy three different ways. Yeah. So are you looking for a motion there, Mr. Chair? Yes. What? To allow the person to use eight days? Uh, Ten days. I make a motion to allow the uh, four hours. Sixty-four, 64 hours. hours. Yeah, I'll allow, allow the uh, motion to. And and again, I'm 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 uncomfortable doing this in public session. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about a person. Sure. And I shouldn't I I shouldn't know, and it doesn't. So. Frankly, Just to let you know, I, yeah. I feel uncomfortable doing this in open session, but I'll make a motion. Okay. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Okay. Driveway policy. We jump all over the place tonight. <laughs> you got an apron policy? Is there a draft in front of us or is it a discussion? There's no um, draft at this point. Yeah. George is working on it. He's had some conversations and thoughts. Um, for the board's consideration mm -hmm. of uh, five feet from the right, town right of way. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, the road work that we do is um, uses Chapter 90 funds or some other state aid program. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that um, we are in keeping with you mm -hmm. know state aid policies sure. as well. And um, so he did check with District 2. And it is allowed. Um, they don't have a recommendation as far as you know the a number, um, but we can use it. George is thinking about again the five feet from the town right of way. From the town right of way, or from the well, area? The area. I, 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 my, my, what, what I would recommend, my, my, if is, is that you come from what the traveled way is, the the present presently paved location, mm -hmm. five feet from that up to five feet as long as it's within the town layout. So you don't want to go on to, you know. Private property, right. So if, if you have, a, like, for instance, um, Old Amherst Road, mm -hmm. okay? So you could go, you, the town road is actually further than the pavement. Right, right, because like, the right away extends so, an X number of feet. So you would, right. So. The highway department would, would they, if they choose to, or if they're repaving, they would extend five feet from the pave, pavement right. into the drive, into the home's driveway. The reason we do that is to protect the road surface, to prevent cracking and deterioration of the road surface. Mm -hmm. Not in, and so I would say that you would go up to five, you know, up to five feet. Mm -hmm. Um, from the paved road into a driveway, not not the travel. I mean, I mean, then if you said five feet on the traveled way, I mean, there's right. some some people yeah, getting their whole be. driveways paved. And again, I don't think that's a town responsibility. No. I don't think that's a town responsibility. The right of way varies, I'm guessing, from street to street, right? As to far, as yeah, to how far beyond, beyond the paved, yeah. Whether it's the right of way, Tom, or the area of impact as well, it's pretty easy to see when a road has been paved and go stops here, all the way down. It's pretty right. simple. We'll go five feet from that spot to this spot, and then our area of impact ends. Correct. As and, long and as again, it's inside the way. And, and again, why is it necessary? Because I, I think what ha has happened over time, and and it, it it depends it depends on. Highway superintendent, it, it's, it, it all of a sudden becomes a personality issue. Yeah, which it should it, be. It, 
It's who who are the board of selectmen, who right. who is yeah. who is the highway superintendent, who is the the, the landowner. And you and you wanna take that over. You want I, I think our job is to try to make sure that we treat everybody equally and fairly. Yep. Yep. And and so if you put a if you put a pro, if you put a policy into effect, then it's telling the highway superintendent says, Mr. Highway Superintendent, the first first five feet from off when, once you exit the paved road, the town is responsible for the first five feet. Fair. Okay. And and in that way, it eliminates anybody in the future saying, you know. And, and, and it may may be it may be applicable to the the one the one ten one fourteen North Silver Lane. Sure. You know maybe maybe the last time it was paved they ended up right on the street and they didn't go the five feet and now we have a problem. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, but right, right. but I just want to be consistent mm -hmm. and and say and to me five feet uh, is enough a number. And you said Sherry George has spoken with. Um, District, District two. 2, and that's something that uh, falls within the Chapter 90 funds. It wouldn't be a supplemental. In the 10 years from now, the issue yeah. comes okay. up again. We'll have something in writing that somebody can go back to and look and say, oh, that's what we do. Okay. Not, no. I, and again, to me, I think policies help help us and in, in remain consistent. Mm -hmm. And neutral. And and gotcha. and and I think if you look in the back of our if you look the back of our agenda books all the policies, and 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 again when when I first on the when I was first on the board we had a we had a hard time knowing how to hold a poll hearing. Right. Right. Now if we're holding a poll or or a liquor license, per, now we just go to L's and we open it up to liquor license and tells us what we have to do and we follow the policy, mm -hmm. and and. Believe, believe me when I say there's many, many, many boards and towns across the state that struggle with just that type of, or they, even if they don't, they may not even hold poll hearings. We, we got. Why do you put that there? Sure. What do we do? Now the nice so, part about policies is they, they inject in a measure of objectivity, and that's the most important part. Yep. So, and, and again, why is everybody? The, to me, the policy that that a, a great example of the policy is the free cash policy. Mm -hmm. And there's something we said for efficiency, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every right. time something comes up. Good point. You got your information, you go back to it. And, and and so it won't it won't depend it won't depend on who the highway superintendent, who the board, and a board. And again, a policy can be changed by a board. Sure. Um, but at least, at least the the it's it's out there that there's we're looking for a consistency. No different than people may wonder why we get notices about uh, in the mail about town meetings and special town meeting, and I I can tell you why that happened. We we had no we had no policies, and and there was a feeling 20 years ago that we were having special town meetings, and no one and and. Business was being conducted when no one knew about it. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Now everybody gets everybody gets a mailing, mm -hmm. and the mailing says we're going to have a town meeting. So you can say that you don't that you would, didn't know, yeah. but we know that that every resident in town will send a, a card to make a now. I can't help it if you read it, right? But certainly the effort was made. Correct. Yeah. And it's the same sense. thing with a town clerk. When a town clerk sends out about dog licenses, yep. the, the, the town clerk has a policy, and I can absolutely guarantee you that you've gone through three or four, three at minimum three or four notices before you get the summons to go to court. Right. Good point. Good point. Perfect so, segue into the next topic. So draft. You want to talk to folks at Stam, see if they have any sure. people out there that have done this. And yeah, I've sent one. Um, request on the listserv. I haven't had any responses, so okay. we might be trailblazers. Don't be okay. asking well, there us. There you go. Sunderland, <laughs> once again, Ooh, tip yeah. of the spear. That's right. It's always the same. Life on the bleeding uh, edge. A special uh, schedule for a special shut. I'm sorry. Special schedule for a special town meeting. I have a shutdown on my mind right now. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, another so animal. Mr. Mr. Chair, on this one, I mean, we don't have to. We obviously don't have to have it. But what I would like, to, but at the minimum, I, I, I would like I would like to memorialize somehow the and and I think the best way to do that is through a, through a warrant article that that documents that the that specifically documents the work that the 300th committee did 
by requesting the sixty five thousand then then they actually put on the the three hundred celebration and turning back fifty three thousand x amount of dollars to the town i think I think that having having that memorialized through a town meeting vote is is a historical data that should it does two things a it historic it historically memorializes but it also is another attaboy to the committee for all the work that they did so if you don't want to do it now we we want to do it in the future mm -hmm. that you know if you want to do it in you know one in october or whatever after free cash is certified yeah. that's fine but i do think that it's important that we do do that okay so you so, don't want it to count to for this year's free cash I personally, I would say, you know, I'm I'm saying I would I would I wouldn't mind if we held this, that special town meeting to yeah. do that and and if, and if, and and to go back to, because the override passed. Thank you, thank you, town, for doing that, and all the hard work that went into that, and and for everyone that voted because I think it's important, no matter what side of the of the, the vote you took, I think it's important that you come, and and I think, and again, I think that it, they know. People understand that we appreciate the vote, and that we haven't, in a long—I don't think—in 20 years, have gone back and and we vote. Uh, if 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 was a yes vote, that was a the everybody wanted a yes vote and came back a no. We haven't gone back to revisit that no vote until the next annual town meeting. We haven't scheduled specials just to go back to. For a long time, mm -hmm. and I and I think people need to realize that 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 their votes are respected, and, and no matter if it's yes or no. Mm -hmm. But what I'm what I'm saying is that I I think it'd be a great idea if we could go back and and fix um, the things that we that we didn't fix by by policy, mm -hmm. um, such as the um, uh, free cash and the allocation of free cash into uh -huh. we left it there dead. Right. right, we we pull we pull. I if if we did that, that's fine. I think that's important. Before we, mm -hmm. um, so I don't have a problem doing that, and I don't have a problem to to memorialize the uh, contributions and the hard work of the uh, three hundredth committee as well. I'm so, sure there's probably a few other things we can well, put gonna, on there too. I was just going to ask, Sherry, sure, yeah. could could, would it be possible to drill down on what's remaining in free cash? And we know what the warrant articles were. What we left there, we passed over. And what the impact would be to free cash? It's about one hundred and seventy-five thousand in free cash right now. Okay. Okay. And you're talking about taking. You're talking about closing the account, special revenue fund, and uh, applying to the general fund the fifty-three thousand dollars coming back from three hundred. The policy yeah. says at least a hundred thousand goes back. To refund free cash annually, okay. so we have that okay. that's our, like, already baseline. on the table. Yeah, yeah, that's the baseline. So, Tom, to your point, we could take, we can talk about the different mechanisms for the use of that, um, for the use of that um, closing the special uh, revenue fund for the three hundred. Right. And then maybe in the next week or so, we'll know if there's any unpaid bills that have got to be dealt with, uh, whether they're done at town meeting or they're done administratively. Yeah, interdepartmental transfers. Yep. We have a couple of, that are close. So okay. there's always some stragglers that. But the thing is, we would have we have to use free cash by June thirtieth, or Correct. it's gone. It's done. Correct. So whatever happens is going to be done before June thirtieth. We have to have 30th. fourteen days to hold a special town yep. meeting, so we're close. So we have that for our next meeting, okay. our recommendations, and then we'll call it if if we sure. choose to call it. Sounds good. Or memorialize it in in, okay. in the fall, one or the other. Okay. All right. Summer schedule we did already. Public comment, Peter. Anything? No, just one question. The uh, you talked about the capital planning committee, uh, and I think we voted at town meeting to change the membership of that. Correct. We did. Yeah. And I wonder how you progressed on that. Oh, we haven't met yet. So, was that going to be? I mean, is it the committee's role to come up with new members, or is that the board's role? I think it would be the board's role. So our our current our current appointment schedule right now is out. We should actually advertise for those. We should have, does right, that require attorney things. general's approval first before the we do it? Bylaw or? change does. Bylaw. Yeah, so we have to wait for that piece, but we can okay. still advertise for it. I, I would I would expect that, that one there would go through. It's not a zoning bylaw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one's composition. <laughs> zoning bylaw. Who the hell knows? 
the AG can look at it and go, nope, you missed a period here or whatever. That and should have been a, of, I don't think a, a composition of a capital planning would. Uh, well, that's still to be implemented. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we will be advertising for that going forward. I guess the other, the other thing was just, uh, I was going to mention it last time, but I've forgotten. That is that we have a, uh, a new business manager appointed for the school system. Mm. And right. it's Shelly Perea. She's actually a member, a resident of Sunderland. Oh, nice. And she's got a good background and was uh, enthusiastically recommended by Darius, the superintendent. And um, so we'll be back to the traditional model of a business manager. Okay. She, she's coming on. The overlap in uh, some number of days with the current operation so mm -hmm. that hopefully we can make for a smoother transition. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so. Any word in the facilities manager? I know that was posted. That's been posted, but beyond that, I don't know. We have a meeting tomorrow night, so maybe there'll be more update. But as of now, I don't know more than that. Okay. All right. Anything else uh, with respect to public? If not, uh, at this time, I'd entertain a motion to enter executive session under the thing, chapter and verse, right? National Law, chapter 30A, section 21A3. And that's to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. Uh, of an open meeting law may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair uh, so declares. In this case here, it's a conversation uh, with the ZBA, uh, and I do declare uh, that it would be better to have this discussion in executive session. Roll Motion. Motion. Second. This will be a roll call vote. Mr. Bergeron? <laughs> Aye. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Feidenkevitz? Aye. 